Good evening. It was supposed to help people with pain, but it's killing them on the street. Fentanyl, 100 times stronger than morphine, 40 times stronger than heroin. It's now being called an epidemic in Toronto, and a meeting was held here at City Hall to try and stop it. It is not acceptable in our city, it is not acceptable in our country that people who in many cases are suffering from a form of uh, mental illness through addiction are dying in a lonely uh, fashion. But people are dying and fentanyl is a growing reason why. It's now the number one opioid killer in Ontario. The coroner's latest numbers show it caused 166 deaths in 2015. Compare that to 109 deaths from oxycodone, 102 from methadone and 59 from heroin. It's still not nearly as bad as the crisis in BC, but the fear is it will be. We know in general, for whatever reason, drugs tend, drug problems tend to start in the west of Canada and move east. Police seized three kilograms of fentanyl last year. That's up 750% from the year before. And a lot of people are dying in our city and the numbers are going up. Toronto alone had 45 fentanyl deaths in 2015, almost double from the year before. No numbers are available yet for 2016, and that is part of the problem, a lack of real-time tracking, something that was addressed at the tactical meeting today. We want real-time information, uh, but at this point, the best data we have is from 2015 from the coroner's office, and it's with respect to deaths. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We want to know what's happening with overdoses. What are the drugs that people are using? Um, often their combinations. Uh, who's using? Other ideas on combating fentanyl deaths include better coordination of services, greater public awareness, and greater access to naloxone, which is an antidote to fentanyl. People who are trying to get help to end their addictions. And I know at CAMH, for example, if somebody with an addiction calls asking for help, they can wait up to six weeks just for their first appointment. Do we have enough resources to help people who want to stop this altogether? In the entire area of, uh, of mental health and addiction, um, we are falling way short of what we need to do to help people. People are recognizing at last that mental health issues, including addiction issues, are health issues and that should be treated no differently than if you have a lung problem or a heart problem. The present uh, availability of treatment uh, programs and facilities in Ontario is not adequate and, in, and that means in Toronto it's not adequate. Now the province today did confirm it will fund three safe injection sites in Toronto at a cost of about 1.6 million dollars but they still have to be approved by the federal government so it's going to be several months before they are up and running.